Let's begin with our top story. The 2024 Summer Games is officially open following a historical ceremony on the streets and waterways of host city Paris yesterday evening. It was the first time in Olympic history that the curtain was raised outside a stadium. So rather than doing a lap of the Stade de France as might have been traditional, the Olympians were paraded down the River Seine in barges. The rain poured down, but it did little to subdue the atmosphere and may even have enhanced it. Delegations from 206 countries and regions passed some of the city's most famous landmarks and venues before finally arriving at Trocadero Square with the famous Eiffel Tower in the background. There, French President Emmanuel Macron officially declared the 33rd Summer Games Open. French judo great Teddy Renner and sprinter Mary Jose Perec together lit the cauldron. Our reporter Feng Yile has more. In a break from tradition, the opening ceremony of the 2024 Olympics was held outside of a stadium in the heart of the French capital. Despite a downpour and following a mysterious hooded torchbearer, delegations began the parade by boat along the Seine River. Among them was China's team of 405 athletes. Paris itself was transformed into a grand stage with French cultural icons and musicians. The ceremony was an unprecedented open-air show as organizers promised it would be a show for everyone. Just look at the reactions. Everyone here seems so captivated. Well, across the city, either at local cafes or public park like this, people from across the globe are gathering together. The opening ceremony is already a unique spectacle and being here together with such a diverse crowd makes it an even more special experience. It was incredible to see all the people working a lot and so hard to make this real, to do the first uh, Olympic Games outside of the stadium and take all people traveling in the Rio Sena. It's, it's like, whoa. Um, impressive part is um, uh, everyone cheering for uh, other countries. Uh, it's really good that everyone uh, can seem to be uh, appreciative of everyone and, and that's what I like about uh, the Olympics. The evening cultivated with the Olympic flame being relayed to a balloon floating in the sky, marking the official start of the Games. And athletes representing over 200 countries are ready to compete and inspire. Feng Yilei, CGTN, Paris. Tony Waterman is live for us in the French capital, Paris. Tony, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. Tony, the opening ceremony, what a spectacular spectacle it was. Give us some of the highlights of the event. Yeah, you know, Richard, until it actually took place, nobody knew exactly what was going to happen because it had been shrouded in secrecy, even though there was a documentary that was made about the preparations. This was intentional by the organizers to just build that anticipation and the excitement. And when the show came out, uh, one of the first acts was Lady Gaga. So really setting the stage there for what was to come throughout the night. You had the athletes making their way down the river set on the six kilometer long course. Uh, down the river, you had hundreds of thousands of people on the river banks. And in between the boats coming down, you had these very big performances, dancers on barge, people uh, on roofs dancing, uh, musical acts. The thing really culminated, though, at the very end. This was when Celine Dion came on stage. She sang a song. This is her first performance uh, in four years after she stepped away from the limelight after being diagnosed with stiff person syndrome, which is a very debilitating neurological disease that has affected not just her body, but also her ability uh, to sing. She came out, she was the closing act, and it was a triumphant return for her. But really, uh, the show itself really now setting the bar for opening ceremonies going forward, because as you mentioned, this is the first time ever it was held outside, not in the safety of a, of a stadium where you can control the environment, perhaps close a roof if it's raining out. We weren't able to do that last night, and uh, things went off uh, pretty much without a hitch. There were a couple of glitches, but overall, uh, people seemed very pleased with the final outcome. Well, that's great. It seems that's going to be the talk of the town for many years to come. And before we let you go, Tony, talk to us about the latest on the targeted train networks and the overall security situation in Paris right now. 
Well, this is uh, after those attacks on the high speed rail network uh, before the opening ceremony in the early hours of yesterday morning. Train disruptions are still happening. There are still trains that are being canceled or delayed. Thousands of people remain stranded. The uh, the train operator has deployed thousands of workers to try to fix the problem to get these trains back up and operating, but is going to take at least until Monday, they say, for that to actually happen. What happened with these fires is that they were set in such a way that they damaged the fiber optic cables uh, that help these trains run. So each of them has to be uh, fixed individually by hand. It's a very tedious process and it is going uh, to take time um, and they still don't know who did this arson attack. It was a coordinated effort, they said. Uh, they don't know what the motive is at, at this point, but when that individual or individuals is eventually caught, they do face some very hefty fines and potentially decades uh, behind prison. When it comes to the security, it's still very, very tight here in Paris. It is going to be throughout uh, the length of these Olympic Games. 75,000 police soldiers and private security guards deployed throughout the course uh, of these Olympics. So security will remain tight, although I have to say moving around the city this morning was a bit easier now that the opening ceremony is over and train uh, metro stations have now been reopened in the downtown core, uh, but security still very tight.